Hello, creative people. Welcome to Creative Conversations. My name is Hollis Citron, and we are so happy that you have chosen to spend this hour with us. So I am owner and founder of I Am Creative and Express Yourself Publishing, and I am on a mission to expand the definition of creativity beyond a pencil and a paintbrush and empower people, especially adults, to own their voice that comes in so many different forms. So this space was created to talk with people with all different jobs, hobbies, and interests, and to have conversations about experiences and perspectives all centered around three questions. One, how do you define creativity? Two, how do you incorporate it into your life? And three, why do you think that it's important? Then we have a free-flowing conversation and we see where it goes. So I have had the opportunity to talk to musicians, Reiki masters, mediums, doctor, lawyer, real estate agents, and so many more. And these conversations explore the reality that creativity is not cute. It is necessary. People have defined creativity as their soul's essence, their courage, their imagination, basically all that we are and want to be. So sharing these stories expands our thinking and opens up self-expression to feel more empowered, connected, and dare I say, happy. So my inspiring guest for today is Kelly G. Wilson. She is the Butterfly Guide and is an intuitive life transformation coach for women reconnecting themselves after heartbreak so they can reclaim their self-worth, re, uh, repair their confidence, and live their best life. Kelly's journey began 10 years ago when she navigated total life destruction after divorce, which catapulted her on a journey of self-discovery and reinvention, where she learned the true definition of authenticity, soul alignment, and connection. Kelly, welcome to the space. So yeah, if you can press the button again to tap here to call in. The circles next to the creative, next to the circle saying creative, then I can invite you up to the stage. And if it's not working for some reason, you can leave the space and come back in. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Can you hear me now? Hi, Kelly. Thank you for having me. And I love that little extra instruction. It got me, it got me going. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, it is so quirky the way this thing, it can be temperamental, but I appreciate your patience. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so excited for our conversation. <laughs> Yay, me too, me too. So yeah, so after reading that brief intro, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm just going to go with I'm a lover of life. So, I am a life coach, actually a transformational life coach. I am an artist. I am a mother. I am a former corporate woman turned entrepreneur. And like you had said in my introduction, I really am here to serve the women that are, um, you know, stepping up for themselves and reclaiming their life. Because so many women, either if it's from heartbreak, if it's from being in momhood for so long and just kind of like sucking the life out of you. Um, so yeah. that's heartbreak. Being in an endless job or a job that's no longer in alignment with you, that's heartbreak. So I help women rebuild and reclaim their life after heartbreak, step into their self-worth, repair their confidence, and really live their best life. And I'm just um, I'm thrilled to do the work. It's a deep excuse me, a deep soul level yes for myself to help these women because we are all meant to thrive. You know, surviving is no longer an option. We are meant to thrive. And that's what I'm here, about, here to inspire and empower other women to do. Oh my gosh, that's so freaking powerful. And I like how you defined that heartbreak goes beyond just the concept of like a divorce in that way, that it's this lifeless space. Yeah. That's really, really an amazing point because it's true, right? I mean, people are stuck in the job. People are stuck in parenting and 
sad about it, depressed and angry because that's real. I mean, we get these kind of emotions and it can take over your life in not so good of a way. Yeah. And we're, you know, and we're somehow have believed that that's the life we're meant to have, which is a life of, like you had said, meaningless or being a robotic or automatic. Yeah. Um, or, you know, we'll, we'll talk, I'll just dive into this for a second. I mm -hmm. had four kids in five years. So I started out with twins. That's how I kind of <laughs> accelerated mm -hmm. that number. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, you know, I has, had postpartum depression. My mm. physical body was struggling, you know, to maintain itself, let alone show up for my kids. My, yeah. and then while I was, you know, caring for my kids, I couldn't take my vitamins because I was breastfeeding one of my kids and he was having a reaction to it. So, I mean, so it's also about just, you know, when you are down, either because of a physical situation, an emotional situation, because you're not feeling support, you're not feeling loved, you know, wow, having little kids is very stressful, you know, right? So any mom listening to this, having little kids is very stressful. And I just want people to know there is an option. You know, I just about, well, actually a few months ago, I ended my corporate career. I ended my corporate job because it was no longer fulfilling me. I was crying going into work. I was, you know, barely again surviving. And I kept saying, no, wait a minute. You know, this is not okay. This is not how I want to live my life. And what I want people to know is you have options. So if you're feeling in that space, you have options to get out of that space. That is the message I want to share today. I mean, besides the creativity, that is no, the message. No, but, but, that, but that is the message. And it's the message in all that we're going to talk about today. Perfect. I, the, these conversations are so are so needed um, because everybody thinks, oh my gosh, you know, postpartum, gratefully, it's been a conversation that's been um, uncovered and been talked about more. And it's not like a taboo thing to talk about. Oh, you're saying that having a kid right. is a bad thing. You're lucky to have a child. You're lucky. Yeah, you are. You're grateful for all this stuff, but there are the physical elements that are real. Yep. And um, you feel so lonely and there's so many guilt and all this stuff that gets tacked onto this stuff, which isn't like you said, it's not serving anybody. It's 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 not for growth. It's for keeping you stuck. Yeah. And you are not meant to live that life. Right. You are not meant to live that life. Life is meant to be filled with joy, possibility, adventure, happiness, laughter. You know, if you're not laughing a couple times a week, that's a good cue to say, OK, what can I do and shift in my life to invite more laughter? What can I, and, and I am going to tie this into creativity has been my biggest outlet to feel myself and who I am and to bring such a joy because it's self-expression and there, you know, and there's so much more involved in that. But if you're not creating, if you're not laughing, if you're not enjoying life, you know, just, just take a deep breath and just say, wow, I have something to look at. Yeah. I have something to look at. Whew. Okay. We are going to be talking about metamorphosis, transformation, emotional Perfect. freedom. Oh my God. Craziness. Okay. So let's start off with our little icebreaker. So, um, Kelly, would you rather have purple skin or a blue tongue? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you said purple, it was great because about two years ago, I totally rocked the purple hair. So I owned it. So, I'm, <laughs> And I always wanted blue hair and never went there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I would pick purple skin because... Um, there is something so enlivening and so free to like, just express myself from the out or from the inside out. I have, I feel good inside. Right. And when I'm feeling good inside, I want to express that into the world. So rocking purple skin <laughs> would be awesome. <laughs> Because if I had a blue tongue, no one could see it unless I was trying to, you know, like talk to them or sticking my tongue out at them. <laughs> I love it. And that is, I, when I saw this question, I was like, I have to ask the butterfly guide woman <laughs> what she thinks because of the amazing colors of the butterfly wings. Yes. Um, I just, I was curious to see how it would translate. So <laughs> yeah, that's a powerful answer. Yeah. Okay. So um, then let's just dive in. You kind of touched on it, but uh, how do you define creativity? 
Wow. And I've been, I've been thinking about that. And um, there's a couple of ways I'm going to say, I feel creativity. So I want to just share with everyone how I feel it. I mean, it feels like life. It feels like joy. It feels like self-expression. And I think I heard you say in your, you know, your opener, it feels like my soul essence, but what's interesting and it feels like flow. Um, so creativity is, you know, it's all around, it's expressive, it's joyful, and it's, it's possibility, right? It is. So I used to say this, and I think this says it perfectly. Um, you know, we, we always talk about putting each other people in a box. Don't be in a box, be in a box, be in a different box, right? Um, think outside the box. Here's creativity. Hover above the box. Be so completely cool. wildly, you know, um, away from the box or go create a new box, which is a circle instead of a square. Sure. That's creativity, right? And so, <laughs> so approaching life of what are the other possibilities? Because we've been programmed to, to believe in one thing. What mm -hmm. else is there completely available to me that, you know, could be possible? That's creativity. So, yeah, that's how I would define it. I like how you... Um first started off with how it felt so not just like yeah. this definition but it was more the visceral feeling of it it feels like joy it feels like self-expression yeah. it feels like flow and then <laughs> that's amazing hover over the box <laughs> and make a circle not a yep. square or a star <laughs> or whatever you want it to be like yeah it is create your own damn box Right. <laughs> and make it a circle. <laughs> well, so, I mean, okay, so I go to events, right? And let's say, let's just take, if you go to church, how often do you sit in the same space every single time? If you go to a meeting at work, how often do you sit in the same chair or the same side of the desk? So my invitation to everyone listening today is sit somewhere else. It changes your perspective. You know, it gives you a whole different view. You might need new people. So that there is a, like, that's a tip to invite creativity into your everyday life that doesn't look like getting a paintbrush and a canvas sit somewhere else today go you know take a different route to work walk differently today you know or go you know go clockwise instead of counterclockwise my i took my dog to the dog park yesterday she completely went the opposite direction i'm like oh it's opposite day, day today okay <laughs> 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 but that is such a key point. Oh my gosh. It's, it's those little things. Things don't have to be so complicated and it's true. We are, we are so, aren't we like, so, um, um, habit driven mm -hmm. uh, or routine driven yep. where, yeah, we do sit in that same seat. You have your desk, you have your space, you have your, yeah. We so often just naturally head towards that space just because we're kind of wired that way. Right. And for some people, change is scary. You know, I'm one of those really lucky people that I absolutely love change. And I know it's very real for people that change is scary. So what I say is just build a tiny muscle. You know, start with building your muscle one tiny action at a time, which could be go take a different seat, buy a different, you know, go to a different grocery store today. And that's just starting and then feel yourself like in curiosity. I'm at a new grocery store. I have no idea where any of the food is. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's so true. We go to the store that we like because we can just zip in. We know where it is. And you go to like a different Trader Joe's and you're like, wait a minute. It's a different right. layout here. I'm, I'm discombobulated. <laughs> yeah. And then feel into that. Like, how can I make this fun? How can I just explore this a little bit more and make this an adventure? So what you're proposing is to make all of these moments in life, like not every single moment, but there are, there's the opportunity for these moments to be adventures. Yeah. And you know, one thing I learned a long time ago is creativity is always happening. It's always available. It's always happening. You just need to set your awareness, set your attention to it. So again, if you go into Trader Joe's, like, oh, I'm really, I'm out of my element. I have no idea where to go to get the lettuce, you know, or, or you know, this can of beans or, you know, some really obscure thing. Make it, how creative can you be in that moment? Because creativity is always available. The invitation is always available. I just need to hover above the box to, to see it. Mm -hmm. And it's playful. Yes. Not so serious. We get so caught up in this BS where it's, it's just like, huh. 
Like I can yeah. feel my, your breath gets more shallow. My breath gets more shallow as I'm like thinking of it. You know, you get caught up in the whole um, adulting thing. Yes, absolutely. So I was like, oh yeah, well I have responsibility. Here you have four kids. You had four kids in five years. Yep. It's like, well, I'm an adult and I have this, to, I have to do this and that. And I have to take care of my kids and I have to do, but it's it's finding the, finding the creativity in the moments. That's going to stick with me. I love that. Yes. Yeah. So talk to me about um, this word, uh, metamorphosis. Oh, I love, okay. So I love this word and it's so hard to say, right? So I don't, <laughs> I don't use it a lot of my advertising. Um, so it's true. And it follows the hero's journey. If you're familiar with the hero's journey, um, the caterpillar paves the way for transformation. So if you think about it, a caterpillar was never meant to be a caterpillar for its whole life. Its journey is to be a caterpillar, to move into a chrysalis and come out a butterfly. And I truly, truly believe that when we had just talked earlier about either your life being robotic or your life, you're barely holding on and you're just surviving, you're at the caterpillar level. You're at this level of feeling that this is not my life. This is not what you are meant to be. And so we go on this journey of we going into the chrysalis to transform ourselves and a butterfly actually completely deconstructs in a chrysalis into ooze, right? Primordial ooze, and then rebuilds after that and, and develops wings, develops beautiful colors and develops into its complete authentic self. And then it you know comes out of the chrysalis. It's scary because it's taking its first flight. And then it starts soaring and it starts, it has a whole different perspective because now it's flying, right? 365 versus the little caterpillar that's on a leaf. Um, and that is for me, the journey of rebuilding after heartbreak. You can use your heartbreak as a catalyst to enter a chrysalis. You can say, you know what? I'm no longer willing to be a caterpillar. I'm no longer willing to have this life. I want to survive. I want to, I want to thrive, not just survive. And I'm going to go into this chrysalis of transformation and I'm going to come out the other side as a butterfly because men and women, we are all meant to be butterflies. And, and that is our true and authentic self. And there's things that hold us back from that, right? The way we were conditioned as a child, feeling like we're not good enough. We don't deserve to be a butterfly. We don't deserve happiness in our life. And there's so many like inner limiting beliefs. And I think you, you had mentioned like mindset work or emotional freedom. That is taking your mindsets that are holding you back, your limiting beliefs, transforming them, aka metamorphosis, right? And mm -hmm. transforming them and saying, you know what? I subscribed to that story for so long and I found out it's not true. I found out that is not me. I just believed in a story. Um, so we, 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 we work through that together. We work through that in the chrysalis. And that is part of the transformation of coming out as a beautiful butterfly because we're all meant to be those butterflies. What's, I really like your description in that you said there's the caterpillar, you go into the chrysalis and then the whole deconstructing and like the ooze, yeah. <laughs> the ooze and then the formation of the butterflies. So there's this messiness in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> there is, yep. it's like disgusting. It can be this disgusting oh. ooze mess that then transforms and turns into this, this, this thing that soars this, in this case, this butterfly that, that soars and God, that's an amazing visualization. Thank you for that. And can you imagine, I, you know, I'm so curious if a cut, if a butterfly is scary or is scared. I know as humans, we're scared, but I yeah. don't know what a butterfly is going through, but just, I mean, that deconstruction yeah. is scary because you don't know what's going to happen. So that's why I really latched on to the symbolism of a butterfly because they pave the journey for us, right? Yeah. They know they're coming out the other side as a butterfly. They're going to trust the process and go into it and do the transformation because they know that's what they're always meant to be with the butterfly. Trust the process. Yeah. Yeah. I get, it's like that thing, you know, where you plant a, um, you plant a seed and if it's a, to make an oak tree, then that's what you're going to get is an oak tree. You're not going to get a dandelion from an oak tree seed. Right. In this case, this is nature's way. This is the whole evolution of what happens. Right. 
And so it goes back down to, you know, as humans, we are meant to thrive. We are meant to be our authentic version of ourselves. We are meant to express and be, you know, creative and filled with life and joy. That is the quote butterfly that we are going for, that we are, you know, looking to transform into is that full authentic expression of ourselves. This is kind of like a side fact that I wonder if you know the answer to. Monarch butterflies, they travel, they fly thousands of miles to this one particular warm spot. Yep. Like, and they go through weather. I mean, their <laughs> their leaves are their leaves. Their their wings <laughs> are like paper. Like, how long does it take? I mean, you're not necessarily you're not a scientist in this, so you may not know. But I remember just seeing a little bit about this. I mean, these like paper beautiful animals make it through weather to get to this space, and um, it's just it's just what a journey. I don't think it takes that long either because it's it's the great migration, which I believe is I don't know if it's in fall or whatever. So I, I have a feeling when I'm thinking about this, you know, they get there in a month or two. They, they must if they're migrating to a warmer place. Yeah, but you think, by God, they are like, this is a butterfly. Yeah. And they know where they're going. They have this radar. It's not like they're putting in a GPS. <laughs> like they know right. where they're going. <laughs> And just, and I love that visual because I'm seeing a gazillion butterflies flying, you know, yes. south. And what else can we, you know, take away from that visual is that they do it together. They do it in community. They are not migrating alone, right? They're not trans. They're not transversing their journey alone. So I love that visual as well. Yeah, not migrating alone because it's true. Don't we feel like? God, we as humans, we have so much shame. We have so much, oh, I can't reveal, I can't shed my skin mm -hmm. to, to show my authentic self that's being vulnerable, that's being weak, that's being all these ideas that we have on how we'd be viewed by others um, keeps us in our space. Yep. So we're not really being um, with our tribe. Yep. <laughs> I'm imagining a butterfly tucking its wings back and trying to walk with its legs. And that's exactly what you just described. It's like, I'm a butterfly, but don't see me. You know, don't look at, I'm not, I'm really a caterpillar in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's kind of a crazy image. <laughs> yeah. The other, the other like special thing about the butterfly that I think often gets overlooked is when they come out of the chrysalis, their wings are wet. And they flap a little. Mm. They flap to dry out their wings. And mm -hmm. that is the scariest part, I think, in a personal transformational journey is when you're coming out the other side and you need to introduce yourself to the world as I'm a butterfly now instead of a caterpillar. And it's so interesting and beautiful to watch. But that's like that's the crux of you know, coming out as a butterfly, coming out of the chrysalis is flapping your wings, drying them off, trying them out, you know, and you can just see the butterfly kind of flapping and trying it out until they take flight. But it is another scary step in the process because, hey, they just woke up with wings. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like when horses are born, they just kind of like get up and wobbly shaky. and shaky and then they start moving. Whereas, yep. Us humans, it takes, you know, a year <laughs> yeah. yeah, to get that going. Wow. Well, you, can you dig in a little bit more with your journey? Because, I, you know, your topic is just rebuilding after heartbreak. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit more about, you know, you had the divorce and then raising, you were co-parenting, correct, with your four children? Um. It, it took us a while to get there, but yes, we are co-parenting. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll go into it. And I actually have kind of a couple heartbreaking stories in my journey. So that's a that's another beautiful lesson, right? Heartbreak doesn't just happen once. And really personal development isn't a one and done deal. It is a lifelong commitment because it feels good. It feels great being who you are. So eight years ago, I, um, well, and actually 16 years ago, I had my twins and then I had four kids in five years. I have four beautiful boys and my body, like we had said, postpartum depression, hormonal changes, weight changes. Um, 
I really lost touch with life and the joy of life during the early part of my mother, my phase of motherhood. Combine that with my divorce. And at the time of my divorce, that became my total de- devastation um, to my life. And I can tell you this, that like, I did not know which way was up. I did not know what to believe in. I would see things and see people. And I just, I lost all concept of my life before that, like total devastation. So I, I did two things and it was beautiful. Um, I, uh, attended a 10 month spiritual development program. And at the same time, I, um, enrolled in my first life coach certification program and it's about self-help right self-coaching and because i was learning tools to not only help others but it was helping myself and the spiritual component never really was there until i went into this deep process of my spiritual development and really learning about the universe and the mechanics of the universe really open my eyes to that creativity that we talked about that life is always corresponding with you that life is working for you not to you and where that creativity is all around and in that and so it was a parallel journey um a a year later so i was a stay-at-home mom for nine years i had left my corporate it job to become a stay-at-home mom and then um, a year after my divorce i went back into corporate so then life became just really real for me you know i i had to make money i had to support my family um i was on my own financially to support and my choice and um so life became real and it was again being true to myself in the corporate setting and that's a whole nother conversation but you know for anyone out there that is spiritual there is an ongoing conversation in that community of how can you be spiritual in a corporate setting? So that was one of the journeys I was on. And I was, I would date and I would have heartbreak. And then um, the last time, you know, I had heartbreak. I was like, okay, I need to stop this. There's something clearly wrong here with me. I took full ownership of this. I'm like, I'm going to, I am going to dig into this. And, and rebuild myself in the dating capacity. So I had built my life up, right? Financially, stability, spiritually. I practice, I'm fiercely practice radical self-love and radical self-care, but I wasn't getting the dating part right. And so I put a pause to it. Um, I got a dog so that I wouldn't get into the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I invested in another program that really bettered myself in what does it mean to have a life partner versus a soulmate, you know, versus, you know, I, what is, um, uh, you know, just being together and having the same values and the same beliefs, how to show up authentically in dating. So Mm -hmm. I met my now husband, I think three years ago or three and a half years ago. So, so here's the interesting part. Um, shortly thereafter that I graduated, I have a master's in business administration. So I have an MBA, I'm a corporate gal in it, I'm a certified project manager. And I had this inner ping in my, in my heart. I am meant for more. I want to be of service. I want to empower women. I really want to step into, and there was again, that, um, something was within me that wanted to come out and it was the fullest expression of who I am. Mm -hmm. And so over the past year, you know, beautiful life happened. And I had another heartbreak, which was, I was living and working in a corporate career that was no longer serving me. I was crying, going to work quite often. I was under expressed, undervalued and under serving and so um, working through that process again, I stepped away from my corporate career, oh, uh, 37 days ago. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Full-time. Thank you. Full-time, full-time, fully vested, fully focused into my entrepreneur journey and being of service to others. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's rebuilding, right? That's, that that's a story rebuilding. of rebuilding. But you know what? It's real. And I I have so many questions, but one that um, is jumping out to me right now. So the spiritual development program that you took on at 10 months yep. and enrolling as a life coach, was that referred to you by anybody or is this just something that you found on your own? So the life coach, I actually um, hired a life coach during my divorce. And then after my time with her, I enrolled into the life coach program. 
um, because I've always wanted to help people in one fashion or another. And then the spiritual ones, this was interesting. I mean, this was, it was presented to me. So I, you know, things showing up in perfect timing. There is no coincidences. Paying attention, and then the next piece is right, paying attention. What is happening? What is what is happening? And it showed up in a perfect time. Um, and actually, so I, I'm one of those people that need um, celebrations and fun. Like if I'm going to go through a really horrific experience, I want to look forward to something on the other side. So I signed up for a spiritual retreat to Malta. And it turned out several of us on that retreat in Malta ended up enrolling in the spiritual development program. So this was my first I mean, it was just the deep, it cultivated my deep inner connection with my higher power, which I choose to call the universe. Now I relate to all, you know, I I relate to God, I relate to goddess, and I honor everyone's higher power. And I really cultivate that in my coaching programs, Mm -hmm. um, the faith, the trust, because you can't do that alone either. You can't live life without feeling supported. You know, whatever your higher power is, um, supported by friends and family, but supported by your higher power. Uh, so yeah, that was, it was, it was going to life school. That's what it was. It was that one year after my divorce or about a year and a half, I went to life school Yeah, and it hasn't stopped. I continue, you know, I've done some, like I said, I went back and got my master's and I've continued to invest in myself, invest in my personal development work. I have never regretted it. Mm-hmm. I think that's um, a very important point. Continue to invest in yourself um, in whatever that looks like to you. But uh, I was really resonating with what you said about when you were realizing that you were outwardly showing you were crying and going to work and all these things, you had this awareness. And instead of just being like, well, this is life, this is what we do, this is, you know, we're, I'm stuck in this, you had the awareness to, um, change it. But then you also, I like how you brought up that you were underserving Mm -hmm. because you were in this space. And when we're people that really want to serve and we really want to show up and we really want to do this transformation and help people in transformation, we realize it's so true when we're in this space of overwhelm and sadness, we're, we're underserving because we're not serving ourselves. Hundred percent, and I want also to remind anyone listening: I had a lot of naysayers. I had a lot of people that said, "Kelly, you make really good money; just stay where you're at," and um, that's normal. And so, anyone in this phase of their life, that is so normal to have naysayers, to have people because it's their own fears. It's their own fears being projected on you. It's their own conditioning that this is what life is, and I'm saying no. I know my life is meant for more. And I'm going to go after it because I deserve more. And the people I'm going to serve deserve more. Yeah. Yeah. Before I left my job, um, so teaching art for 30 years um, in various situations. But then when I was 51, so now that's almost three years ago, I um, I think my daughter at the time, she may have been like 15 or something. And she would just finally say to me, she had been used to seeing me teaching, of course, all the time she'd been alive. But she's like, who are you mad at? Hmm. She's like, are you mad at me? Are you mad at your students who I'd call my kids? She's like, she's like, who are you mad at? And I was like, oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> I am not being a nice person. Like, <laughs> I, I am not being an, and I'm not showing up. I'm not showing up for myself, um, but I'm not showing up for them. Right. Like I'm not being present for them because I'm constantly in this space of my job and how can I solve this problem and how can I solve that problem and how can we make this work better and how can we do and not actually living. Yep. And it's not saying that these things aren't real because yes, the things that work were issues that, or were things that needed attention. But the issue was, is that I was giving a hundred, I was giving 200% of my attention there and it nowhere else. Everybody right. else was getting the back end of my obnoxiousness. Right. And my job served me. You know, like I said, I was, I landed on my feet. It was a mo- single mom of four boys. It served me. It paid the bills. It provided a nice house. You know, we mm-hmm. went on vacation. So, you know, just also recognizing why am I here at this moment? I'm doing life. I'm raising kids. And this is providing me stability. 
and <laughs> honoring that piece of it. And that's where I was at. Um, and I want to honor something that you just shared with me. And this is just, this is just really a, a beautiful point. When your daughter shared that with you, I mean, I'm just going to make some wild assumptions. Mm -hmm. You didn't go into, oh, I feel so shamed of, I've been unhappy and maybe taking it out on others. You sat in a space of curiosity and said, what can I learn from this comment? What is there for me to learn? It was like, oh, I am not showing up authentically yeah. or in alignment with my truth. And this is the outcome of it is she's, people are noticing I'm not happy. So yeah. seeing it from a greater perspective is such a blessing. It is. And it's nice when um, it's that whole respond react thing. Mm -hmm. So if we're reacting to something, um, if somebody were to say something to you, which you would think that it's taking offense, then you're reacting and you're acting with all that emotion. But if you're, re if you're responding, then you're taking that breath, you're taking those beats to kind of think about how you're going to come back with that and also take it in and acknowledge and um, it just feels better. Yes. It, yes. It, generative. It feels generative. It feels growth oriented. Generative. There we go. Yeah. Growth oriented. Whew. Okay. Well, believe it or not, now we're going to question two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is stuff that we spoke about, but it's a little deeper dive on um, how you actually incorporate creativity into your own life. Yeah, I try. I What I've discovered is if I'm not creating every day or really feeling that energy in that space, I'm not happy. So I incorporate it in anything and everything I can do. So for example, I'm feeling very creative in our conversation. I'm using, you know, um, I was going to say colors, but words that kind of represent colors to me, but we're weaving, we're dancing. I'm actually walking, mm -hmm. piecing, you know, so I'm, I'm moving the energy we're creating together. We're creating something together, right. That is going to move and transform people. So if you think of it that way, um, with That's my beautiful. kids, yeah, thank you. With my kids, we, um, oh, if kids are fun. I just have to say this. Kids are so fun. Um, mm -hmm. But I have some kids that are very realist. And <laughs> the best I could say is, you know, when my kids were young, my mom would take them to decorate cupcake cupcakes. My one child, who's a very realist and very structured, would put like four sprinkles. My <laughs> other son that is abstract would just throw color on it. <laughs> and they're the twins. And my mom was like, okay, we knew they were different. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and you can challenge with your kids. So I'm an abstract artist and I left that part out of my journey. I'm an abstract artist though, because it really helps you look at life outside the lines, you know, and I have found beauty in that circle, you know, the red circle on a white canvas. I can find beauty um, and creativity when you walk out in nature and you see, you know, plants dying. Well, that just means rebirth is coming. If you see, you know, pine cones and crushed pine cones, so you, like the death and the rebirth, it's beautiful. It's creative. That's creation in and of itself. So you can, um, you know, teach your kids to even, um, you know, just think outside the box or hover of the box. Let's be really creative in our food today. Something simple, like if they want breakfast for dinner, go for it. You know, if they want ice cream before dinner, go for it and see what happens and have fun with that. Right. And then yeah. I, I know we talked about this earlier. I create I love creating marketing material. I love creating posts and, and connections because it I infuse creativity in my words and in the spaces between the words. I infuse it in the color. So it's very intentional and it's just very creative and expressive. And that translates to people feeling me when they see my marketing material. Yeah. Yes. So much, I re, ah, weaving and dancing, weaving and yeah. dancing in a conversation. Yes. That is so much fun because it's true. When you're, there are certain conversations you have that are very kind of one-sided and it's could be one word answers. And then you're like, hmm, but there's a weave and a dance in that. It's like, okay, so how are we gonna go with this? Are we gonna continue this conversation and like dig a little deeper or are we gonna pull back and move on? You know, move on to somebody else and say this conversation is done. But everything really is a weave and a dance, isn't it? Absolutely. How we walk Absolutely. down the street, how we, like literally when you're walking down a city street, you're weaving and dancing <laughs> all the time. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Listen to that song in your head and just weave and dance, right? Like go over here and 
and just and that's a really fun game to play too is i want to go on the left side you're like just tune into yourself do you want to walk on the left side or right side left side why i have no idea but i'm going to walk on the left side you know that's that's <laughs> the, that's starting to build your trust in yourself listening to yourself and then um trusting in the process and then just going without without knowing the answers Going without knowing the answers, yeah, which can make some so uncomfortable. Yes, but that's the, go ahead. That's the abstract artist in me because I, you know, I wouldn't. I would have an intention when I would paint. You know, I wanted so my intention would be I want to explore. Oh, abundance! You know, I want to explore wisdom, or I want to explore um, faith. And I would just start creating and moving color and blending color and bending color. And then it became that weaving in the dance on paper. And that's how it just showed up for me and transformed for me was just this blending and weaving of color on paper. So I'm not a realist. I can't paint a human being, but that's my abstract version of it. But there's so much emotion in there. And I think this is a great challenge to put out to the audience is intention. Yeah. Is to set your intention of exploration. Let's say that's what it is. And in whatever that looks like, whether it's in cooking, whether it's in writing, whether it's in painting, whether it's in at work um, and you're you know, in the uh, sitting around the business table and, uh, you know, exploring ideas and exploring conversations. It can really be put into anything. Yeah. And when you set the intention, that's a really powerful thing Absolutely. rather than just being, there's good things about spontaneity, but when you set the intention, then there's that awareness at times yes. that it's just like, wow, oh my gosh, I never would have thought of that. Yep. Yeah, if I can, this may or may not relate, but I'm gonna share the story anyways. My yeah, husband go ahead. and I just went on vacation and I set the intention to bring us closer together on the vacation. And guess what? Day two, we got into a big fight. And I knew, like, again, I sat in that space of, this is happening for me, not to me. And I know this is happening for me because I set the intention that this was going to, this vacation was going to bring us closer together. And, it, and yeah, it was a little bit of a pain to go through the conversation, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we came out the other side more connected than we've been in a while, you know? So yes, I set the intention and I held on to that note, knowing this is showing up for me because I set the intention. And again, it goes back to that whole chrysalis, right? Yep. It's like the messiness to then yes. come out the other side. It's the object, the caterpillar, all that goes on in the in the icky oo, icky goo, and yep. then comes out the other side. Um, yeah, I think that was a really great description of, um, of what you stand for. It's kind of like living, literally living what you, preaching what you are. It's not putting on this uh, this fake cover of, well, I'm going to talk about transformation and the butterfly guide and all this. I mean, you're really living it. Yes, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. It's, that's my intention. You know, so the beautiful thing being an entrepreneur, as you know, it is <laughs> we get to create what our business is. We get to create mm -hmm. um, you know, what we stand for. And that is one of the things that one of my core values in my business is to walk my talk show it, believe it. I'm not building my business off of something that I don't believe in. Right. Um, and that's intentional. Mm -hmm. So thank you for um, sharing that. Thank you for voicing or noticing, presencing that you've seen it. That you're seeing Yeah. It. Yeah. Like loud and proud. And <laughs> I love hearing the stories of people that especially have gone. This is why I love talking to so many different people that have gone through like the corporate end and yeah. then have had this transformation into this other space, um, whether it's still within corporate and it's just metamorphosized into something else or like a total change. Um, I, there's just so much freedom in this, this awareness. There's that, you know, the certain percentage of us that are ready to hover and create our own and just be like, enough, I'm breaking the norm. Just like you said, the naysayers, there mm -hmm. are so many out there and they get in our head. It's like we ask a million different opinions. My daughter's always saying, what should I get to eat? 
should I get, should I have the hamburger or should I have the ravioli? I'm like, babe, what do you want? I don't know what your stomach wants. <laughs> like, like, so I don't know what you're craving. Like, what do you want? And she's like, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. She's like, uh, then we go through this thing. I'm like, I don't know. Why don't you get the ravioli? She's like, I think I'm going to get the hamburger. And I'm like, why do you even ask me every time? Because you know you're going to do the opposite. She's like, because I need to hear it so I can do the opposite of whatever you say. <laughs> She just needs to be presented with an option. Like, yeah, nope, no, not that one. <laughs> we need to be part of a community here to talk through this process. I love it. At least she knows her decision-making process. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> She's like, just be there, be that voice, be that person, and then we can all move on. Yep. So wonderful. So as we are approaching the top of the hour, we are getting to the third question, which is what we've talked about this whole time, but it kind of puts a nice little bow on it as to um, why do you think creativity is important? Mm, wow. Um, it, it brings me joy. It brings me happiness. It brings me life. It brings me purpose. Uh, there is nothing more rewarding than expressing myself. And I think creativity, you know, I express myself through creativity. I bring what is happening in the inside, outside through creativity. And there is nothing more fulfilling than feeling fully expressed. Being who you are, being seen for who you are, which I know is scary for a lot of people. Um, you know, and when you can work through the, all those limiting beliefs and those blocks and barriers, it feels amazing. It just feels amazing. I mean, you are truly the have purple skin. Right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Free it from the inside out. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. I'm going to walk around feeling like I have purple skin today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I need you to actually, I remembered reading about the trip that you took to, it was a transformational trip and I'm going to mispronounce where you went. It was in the beginning, soon after your divorce. Yeah, that um, was, Malta. It was Malta. Yep. And I think Amnidra was probably the word that you read if you read my kind of about section. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I just, I was like drawn, I was like, I want to hear a little bit more about this before we end this. Um. You know, this might sound weird. It's it was a journey of returning home, and not in the physical sense, in the home to yourself sense. Like it was my first invitation to reconnect with who I was. Because remember, at that point, I didn't know who I was, and actually, she probably wasn't even defined at that point either. But it was my first invitation to not only connect with myself; it was the connect to. It was my first introduction to my higher, higher power in a way that felt utter in alignment. So we went with, um, let's say, 10 people, and we saw ancient temples. We held ceremony in temples. And ceremony, there's nothing scary about that. That's going and speaking your truth, you know, in front of a group of people and speaking about a topic or speaking, you know, setting an intention or releasing. A lot of releasing was done there. Bathing in the waters of Malta was magical. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saw, oh, and so Malta, I just have to share this with you. This is the epicenter of, of Earth of the divine feminine. It is the birthplace, or it is, you know, like there's ley lines across the earth. Um, oh, I'm gonna hopefully not hack this up. Glastonbury in the UK is like the ley line in the chakra, if you will, of the heart chakra of the earth. And Malta is the epicenter of the divine feminine. So we went into the hypogeum, which is an underground um, temple. We did breath work in that temple. We let it all out and left it on the floor in that temple. Like we got on the ground. We had a special session to get on the ground, this wet, cold ground um, and make noise and breath work and let it out. So it was about, so it was my first introduction of, you know, like having this deep, profound experience of relating with nature, relating with temples you know um historic places 
um, relating with the people of a different culture and, and just feeling into what that meant for me and how it was supporting me. Is any of this making sense? It's kind of hard yes. to explain. <laughs> yes, it is. It's totally making sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like, so you can go to Sedona and just see the red rocks. You can go to Sedona to have a transformational experience. You know, so it's kind of like you can go to have the surface experience or you can go to have a deeper experience. I went to Malta for the deeper experience. And here's another thing. Because of that and so much transformation, our last night, and we were in circle a couple of times. And my last night, I remember crying because I did not know how to go back. So this, this really weaves it in beautifully. I did not know how to go back to my life. I had kids that were waiting for me. I had a new house that was waiting for me. This was like three months after my official divorce. And I did not know how to go back. And I was crying, like, help me. And because you know what? I was no longer the caterpillar. I was no longer, and I was trying to go back into a caterpillar life. And what I, you know, I was in the chrysalis at that point. I was definitely in the chrysalis, which is, again, even being in the chrysalis is discombobulating. You don't have your wings yet. Your primordial ooze still. And that's exactly what I was feeling with my words. I didn't know how to go back and be a caterpillar anymore because I was not meant to be a caterpillar anymore. You know? mm -hmm. So it's supporting yourself through that. It's getting support, getting help, asking for coaching, you know, coaches or other people that can help you through that process. It's possible. It absolutely is. It's scary if you do it by yourself, if you didn't, if you've never done it before. Thank you for sharing all of that because that is like the most perfect way to bring everything to a mm. close. Because as you were talking, there were many things that stood out to me, but I specifically wrote down surface surface experience or deeper experience. Yeah. And which which are you ready for? Yeah. You can have a surface a surface experience anywhere where you go. You can have surface conversations. You can have um, surface whatever, but are you going to keep it there or are you going to actually go deeper? And I'm just having this vision to tie it back one more time. A caterpillar walks on the surface, doesn't it? But a butterfly goes all over the place. It does. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's what we created together. Oh that was a beautiful God. weaving and dancing. That was an amazing weave and dance. <laughs> Kelly, can you please tell them how they can connect with you? Absolutely. So it's easy, thebutterflyguide.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. And if anyone wants to join my community, it's called Becoming Extraordinary in Facebook. So I will put all of this into the, um, into the body of the podcast so everybody has access to this. But, oh, my gosh, I am so grateful that you have taken this hour to talk to me. Thank you so much, Kelly. Oh, likewise. I am, um, I am buzzing with excitement <laughs> because we just created together for an hour. Thank you. <laughs> we really did. <laughs> and before we actually say goodbye, what is the final? You had so many amazing words of wisdom, but what is the final word of wisdom that you would like to leave for them? Happy. Again, if, you, if you're feeling lost, disconnected, unhappy, living a life that you're not meant to live, which is just barely surviving, I just want people to know that you have options. You are not meant to be a caterpillar. You are meant to be a butterfly. You have options to get you there, and it's beautiful on the other side. There we go. So this space is all about inspiring, connecting, and sharing stories. So please like, follow, and share so we can spread the word and bring these amazing stories to light because we've always needed these stories, but especially in these times of transformation, to use that word again, it is so, so needed to um, bring us together. So we're not alone. So we wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, wherever you are in this world. And we'll be talking to you again really soon. So goodbye, everybody.